Hi everyone, welcome to Nokia's Roundtable, 5G Packet Core, Top Reasons to Evolve Now. Today we will answer the questions, how do we make the investment in Cloud Packet Core pay off? Delivering extreme services for end users and enterprises requires a flexible, high-performing Packet Core. Our roundtable today will be focused on priority Packet Core topics for CSPs rather than product-specific details. We'll spend some time discussing the monetization of 5G networks and the factors that affect CSP's decisions. I'm here at Nokia's Executive Experience Center in Dallas, and I have four guests connected remotely. Please welcome Ruth Brown, Principal Analyst of Heavy Reading. Ruth covers mobile networks, and her key areas include system architecture, core infrastructure, services, and supporting cloud technologies. Also, Ruth is an advocate for women in engineering. Mike Howley is also joining. He is head of Packet Core Research and Development at Nokia. We also have Gordon Milliken, head of Packet Core Product Management at Nokia, as well as Deepa Ramachandran, head of Digital Operations Portfolio Management at Nokia. And I'm Sharon McTurnan, head of 5G Core Campaigns at Nokia, and I will be your host today. Our chat window is open for live questions, and we'll be answering them during our discussion. And if we can't get to them right away, we'll send answers following the session. So let's get started. Ruth, I'd like to talk to start with you. Our first topic is 5G, 5G monetization. CSPs are exploring how they're going to monetize their investments. What's your perspective? What have you heard from the market? Well, thanks very much, Sharon, and thanks for having me here today. So I guess to address this question, I think we can need to consider two aspects. So firstly, we need to think about the significant technology transformation that we've seen from 4G and 5G non-standalone to 5G standalone. And secondly, we need to really think about what are the new capabilities that are going to attract enough customers for them that they're going to want to pay a premium over 4G services that they have currently. So 2024, this marks the halfway point in the 5G decade. Uh, in November 2023, there was 300 operators that had 5G commercial launches. So that was soft launches and uh, proper launches. But of that number, only 43 had commercial public 5G standalone networks. And those figures are from uh, GSA. So moving to 5G standalone cloud native core networks is quite a huge step change from previous mobile generations technically. Um, but also we need to probably consider the vast financial cost many operators are undertaking to do there. So a lot of operators already have got existing mobile networks. Um, and I think many of them will be evaluating, you know, what does this core network give me over and above what I've got with my existing 4G core? So I think this in part probably explains the reduced number at the moment of 5G SA launches and the operators that have deployed their new, you know, 5G cloud native cores. And um, however, when we sort of hear about the publicized 5G advanced um, service types, you know, we've been talking about them for some time, you know, how they can deliver revenue. Um, they're going to require fundamental technologies in place just to support these, you know, things such as automation. Um, also, you know, we're hearing a number of discussions about rollout decisions and also Many operators are highlighting right now that they want to get to a point where their networks are a quality build. So they've got coverage, they've got good stability on their network, and they've got good level of you know, reliability before they race to put these into sort of a public 5G um, serve, you know, standalone uh, service. So I think that's also playing a part. Now, in terms of the monetization side, so operators really do need to push ahead with their 5G cloud native cores because these are going to underpin the advanced services and capabilities. So we've seen some operators, they've already started building out their 5G core uh, connectivity and functionality. They've started with a you know more basic um, core, but really to um, get to these, you know, the point of these really um, advanced services, they need to start enriching this core extending past the basic standalone core. So this is going to enable these use cases that we've been talking about for some time now. So the, um, you know, uh, network slicing, ultra-reliable low latency, the sort of um, IoT type use cases too. 
Now, if we have a look at the services that we've seen to date, so enhanced mobile broadband's already available with non-standalone uh, 5G. Um, it's probably the first use case that's really started to generate operator revenue. Um, fixed wireless access, obviously part of that initial mobile broadband success story. And I think in large part it's due to the sort of fast, cost-effective ability to connect, sort of we're connecting homes, we're connecting businesses, and connecting these to them broadband services. Um, we're also hearing that, you know, fixed wireless access subscriptions are growing and likely to outpace other broadband access technologies in the coming years. So that's um, very positive. Um, but I think really to extend these revenue opportunities for operators, they need to utilize this 5G core toolkit. So move beyond basic broadband connectivity, address these customers who are keen and prepared to pay for a better experience. So deterministic behavior, new extended services and services that can be created far more quickly. So to give you an example of this, so using the sort of 5G toolkit and kind of extending further from this basic broadband capability I've been talking about, um, there's been a number of operators across Europe and Asia, and they've been looking at rapid creation of 5G IP and Ethernet local area networks. So being able to connect to multiple remote sites, and that's going to offer tremendous flexibility as well as the um, you know, ability to perhaps connect into their existing LAN infrastructure. So I think, you know, to summarize on these points, you know, operators to monetize 5G really need to think their strategies through. They need to showcase the sophistication of 5G and really what it can offer over and above 4G. Thank you, Ruth. Mike, can you add some color as to what Nokia is doing to address these topics? Thanks, Sharon, I can. So we have a new use case to discuss, but I want to start by covering the basics of fixed wireless access or FWA. So FWA is a simple concept where a household plugs a small device into their home called customer premise equipment, this or CPE. This CPE holds a SIM card that authenticates with the 5G network and it can provide an internet connection for wireless services like voice calls, video calls, and other internet-based services. And devices in the house connect to the CPE with Wi-Fi. Now let's shift our focus to enterprises and their specific requirements for FWA. Through our discussions with them, we've learned that they need a quick, affordable, reliable, and secure way to extend their local area networks or LANs from their central office out to multiple remote offices. And they've expressed that there's a lot of difficulties in obtaining optical fiber connections or getting permits to lay new fiber, especially in certain regions of, uh, of the country. Additionally, when there's an outage, it can take hours to restore that connection. And that has a significant impact on their business. And this is where Ethernet over FWA becomes important. This new feature on the Nokia Packet Core allows an enterprise LAN to be extended from a central location to multiple remote locations. From a customer perspective, all they need is a CPE and an electrical outlet, and that makes it a very cost-effective and easy-to-deploy solution. Security is of course, a key aspect for an enterprise. And since all of the data flows in the CSP network, this reduces the risk of eavesdropping. While there are other solutions available to connect offices, they're much more complex and much more expensive and require dedicated transmission. There are benefits for communication service providers or CSPs as well. With FWA, there's no need to dig a trench or lay optical cable, which can be challenging in some places. Additionally, because of the unique capabilities of 5G, such as ultra high bandwidth, low latency, and slicing, these things can be added as, a, as additional value add services. Overall, Ethernet over fixed wireless access provides a cost effective, efficient, and secure solution for extending LAN connectivity to remote offices. 
addressing the specific needs of enterprises while offering benefits to the CSPs as well. Nokia's Packet Core stands out as a good solution for several reasons. Firstly, it's all container-based and it provides high performance on various types of clouds. Second, it's a convergent solution that connects fixed and mobile networks, offering flexibility and simplification. And lastly, Nokia has strong technical expertise to support customers in overcoming challenges with and integrating with third-party platforms and so forth as needed. Great, thank you, Mike. Let's move on to another hot topic, artificial intelligence and energy savings. Ruth, I'd like to go back to you. What are the market expectations around this and what opportunities do you see? Yeah, sure, thanks, um, Sharon. So, you know, service providers are looking for new ways to be more profitable. Um, I mentioned previously when we were um, talking, one of the vital components of the new uh, Matevel Core toolkit is going to be intelligence and intelligent automation. And this really is going to ensure cost and performance efficiency. So around the world, especially in Europe, we're seeing growing energy costs. Operators really now are starting to prioritize energy savings, especially with energy consumption in the telecom industry. Today, it's reaching about 2 to 3% globally. So, you know, they really wanted to start tackling this. Um, I think also operators appreciate they need to make some cultural changes. Um, with 5G, I think they've got the opportunity to take advantage of these leading edge capabilities that will now be available through the new um, cloud native 5G core. Um, so in particular, you know, they can leverage, you know, artificial intelligence, machine learning, you know, use these predictive uh, capabilities and use them alongside, you know, automation to really optimize and fine tune their network operation. So as you can see on my slide here, um, I'm just sort of illustrating the transformation that we've seen from 4G, where we're using more physical appliance-based mobile network elements, all the way over to our kind of cloud native technology, which is I'm um, using containers and it allows for a much more dynamic and agile operation. Um, in previous generations, networks really were built uh, quite static and they supported networks through all conditions. And by that, I mean the networks were dimensioned for the network elements to ensure there was enough capacity for peak usage as well as when it was sort of low usage. So although this gave a great performance and, and was very good if there was a lot of load, it's quite inefficient in terms of the capital outlay for the equipment, but also the ongoing operational costs in terms of, sort of hardware, powering it, cooling it in the data center, and the core network's really not always being fully utilized. So you might start creating these semi-dormant appliances and data centers where the extended capacity isn't really required for a lot of the time. As we move into sort of 5G with this sort of cloud native um, technology, and we've also got automation, we can offer and, and use a lot of energy efficiencies. So allowing the containerized mobile core footprint to flex um, by the mobile network usage is going to be a huge efficiency. So by using sort of AI and ML driven uh, network automation, this can be taken a step further. So using the proactive and um, predictive uh, capabilities, we can predict what network load is and sort of scale the containers accordingly. And we can also think about managing specific processes onto different resources, perhaps turn on or hibernate um, items when load is very light. So this is kind of a new world of managing and optimizing um, the core network for energy. So in particular, it's giving the ability to sort of move away from these uh, permanent static uh, data center footprints. And we're moving and operating a much more agile method um, using additional resources only as required. And this is going to give immediate savings. So immediate savings for power. And then we have all the data center wraparound. So you know, cooling um, in data centers can be especially a high on the energy bill. So this is adding um, savings here. But I think in terms of operators and investment, you know, they're already prioritizing this area for investment in the core network. So, you know, 
AI and ML driven network automation technology really must underpin 5G networks. You know, I think operators recognize that it's needed to assist with the complexity in the 5G core in terms of sort of provisioning, fault detection, lifecycle management, but really it's needed to optimize it as well and to make these new services much more profitable. Great, thank you. Gordon, I was told that Nokia Solutions has been using artificial intelligence to uh, reduce power consumption. Can you give us some details about that? Yes, Sharon. <clears throat> in fact, in our packet core, we've uh, commercialized uh, a local artificial intelligence engine. Um, and we use that in combination with the automation that Ruth just talked about. Um, and in fact, some, uh, let's call it smart controller software for, for servers to be able to really comprehensively manage both the footprint and the resulting power consumption uh, that, that CSPs uh, need to be able to control uh, to be profitable. So we start first with this concept of automation, which allows us to scale in and scale out the footprint uh, based on the user load. Layer on top, our artificial intelligence engine, uh, which uses machine learning to track uh, uh, across all the subscribers using the system, the actual traffic load, and be able to predict future traffic load. In fact, in our system, up to three hours in advance. Um, and with that, proactively scale in and scale out the product footprint as the actual user load in the network changes. This is important for two reasons. One, if you're deployed on a hyperscaler, for instance, where you're paying by the CPU, becomes incredibly important to minimize your footprint and only use the footprint that you actually need to support customer traffic. But also we've taken it one step further and we've combined that with um, intelligent power management where we can create a feedback loop between our application and the power controllers that modulate uh, the, the frequency of CPUs and in fact can also turn CPUs on and off, basically put them to sleep in order to take unused cores, put them to sleep, used cores when they're running at max power, uh, give them, uh, or at max load, give them peak power. And when uh, it's a quiet time in the network, scale back the frequency uh, of those CPUs and the power demand on those, those uh, servers. And again, using our, our, our artificial intelligence engine, we're able to do that in a predictive and graceful way so that we don't uh, stand any danger of network uh, uh, traffic impact. Uh, so sort of a three-layered approach to power management, which can deliver uh, up to 40, 50% power savings for, for network operators, which is a huge, huge difference in their operations. Great, thank you, Gordon. Um, Ruth, I'd like to go back to you for the next topic, which is network slicing and programmability. Uh, we've heard that these are great paths for monetization and new opportunities. What are you hearing from the market and CSPs on this topic? Sure, so I think we're all you know, quite confident that it's a big challenge for operators to make sure 5G lives up to the promise of delivering these new user-centric services, both for consumers and users. Um, we've seen the service consumption has really changed in terms of what people are wanting. So this is a significant factor, I think, when we plan the best strategies to monetize. I mentioned previously, customers are prepared to pay for better experiences, but a key customer requirement now, I think, is is this rapid service av availability. They want it tailored to their needs, and sometimes they want to change their service or, or only have it for a short amount of time. Um, the side you can now see um, on the screen, um, it's illustrating um, the weighted average scores for operator respondents who are ranking which 5G uh, standalone capabilities they think are the most vital for service creation. 
So if we look at this chart, we can see that operators rank network slicing as the most valuable uh, five-piece standalone capability. And this is slightly ahead of network capability exposure via APIs, uh, which comes in second. So these services are advanced services that are only achievable with the 5G cloud native core. The other services, obviously, on the slide, the enhanced analytics, you know, fixed mobile convergence, and also policy control we've had in previous generations. But if we look at sort of 5G, having a programmable core, it, no, it not only allows you to be more agile in terms of creation and orchestration of these new services, but I think the key and kind of really powerful thing about the programmability is it allows third parties to really start developing new services and to add to these new capabilities. So we've got Network slicing, which can offer this much more guaranteed, secure, deterministic um, um, options and kind of tailor these services directly for the customer's needs. And it's also opening more possibilities and new possibilities for revenue. When we look at the network APIs, as I said, we're opening up the opportunity for trusted parties to kind of come in and create services. And this is going to enable a huge area of innovation. So the plan for these kind of global developer communities to start developing new services also and to sort of share revenues with network operators, I think this is going to be an attractive option for monetization. And it's actually one developers are already exploring. Um, if we look at August uh, 2023, so there was an announcement from T-Mobile who were saying developers were now able to uh, use network slicing on its 5G standalone network. So they were really looking at building video calling applications to allow more consistent uplink and downlink speeds and also lower latency. So with the quality of uh, experience benefits of network slicing, um, you know, we might be able to, these developers, to create a service which is much more reliable. So a video service that's not going to skip or perhaps freeze. Um, I guess these examples, they're really a step change on from 4G, but a lot of this is going to rely again on the new cloud native core functionality, um, as well as, again, underlying support from technologies such as automation to get these services created rapidly. Um, I think creating many of these future services as well is going to involve um, developing these ecosystems and the partnerships just to sort of bring together these new solutions and really sort of get them up and going and start channelizing uh, monetization through these new um, models and, and ways of bringing new services around. Thank you. Deepa, can you add on to that and discuss a little bit how Nokia um, sees slicing and how that's going to lead to new business models for CSPs. Uh, Sharon, I think Ruth touched upon a lot of very interesting points there. So, so, so to start with, right, uh, market adoption for slicing has been slow, and there has been this search for an elusive killer app, if I would say, which has not been coming. And and even if you take subscribers like you and me, uh, we are not feeling the benefits offered by by G in terms of what's new. But I think this is kind of slated to change. Uh, slicing has been hampered by the support of a good enough de device ecosystem. So conventional use cases has been limited to live event broadcasts or remote surveillance and so on. But with the support of Android and Apple introducing slicing in the handsets, what is now possible is differentiated appli application performance. So that means uh, an enterprise could guarantee that a Teams app uh, would have a much better performance than a YouTube or a Netflix or vice versa. So this is going to benefit CSPs to monetize more from a consumer app perspective and an enterprise app perspective. So then comes the interesting question of what is Nokia doing uh, to enable this change? And I would reflect uh, answering on that from three different dimensions. One, I think something which Ruth touched about is terms of differentiation. So. The networks, which is our core strong point in Nokia. So I mean, if you talk about core from packet core from policy, we are bringing new changes which will support this URSP, which will allow some differentiated performance. And 
we showcased in the recent core user group about how we could show differentiated performance, not just per app, but even per location. Then the second dimension is strongly on monetization. As we will move towards more critical apps, say from healthcare or public safety or connected mobility, guaranteed performance will come to the forefront. So that means operate with scale or speed, with consistency and reliability. So in my view, while we always call automation is important, I would even stretch the limits to go and say, we need even autonomous operations. So what I mean is create these slices at speed, configure this network, the packet code, deploy on the edge, configure the USB profiles, uh, configure the subscribers, all with agility and simplicity. Second would be, how do you guarantee the slice performance? So first, even to troubleshoot what goes wrong in a slice, right? So there we have to make a radical change from monitoring to observability. So find that needle in the haystack so that you find the problem and fix it soon. And for you to fix, I think one of the points which you touched earlier on intelligence becomes key. So intelligence powered assurance so that you are now able to preventively solve problems rather than reactively solve problems, right? So these I think would be critical factors and as you can see in my chart, Nokia is heavily working on slice automation, autonomous slice operations, both from an orchestration and assurance standpoint. And we leverage that network know-how we bring by providing pre-integrated solutions, which will help CSPs run faster, launch their services faster. Uh, it would mean also ability to have templates and off-the-shelf innovations and solutions, which they can use right off the fly. And very importantly, have a standards compliance interface so that multi-vendor integration becomes really easy. So that's the second dimension on monetization. And the third critical dimension is exactly what was reflected earlier about programmability. So as networks becomes programmable and there are now going to be apps which are going to consume, API-based exposure becomes super important. And that's where the network as code proposition, which is brought about by Nokia, where even Slice APIs could be exposed very easily to applications will make a big differentiation in the market. Okay, thank you, Deepa. As we come to the end of our discussion today, I wanna to thank all of you for sharing your insights and your perspectives here. It's been very uh, enlightening for us. But what I think we'd like to wrap up with is to hear just a final consideration from each one of the panelists. Um, so Ruth is our special guest today. Could, can you kick us off with what you would like the audience to to take away from our discussion today. Sure, so um, yeah, thanks. It's been a really interesting discussion today and I think everyone's really touched on these new capabilities, but I think ultimately we've got to look at the new cloud native um, core and what this toolkit offers. So, you know, getting the core is going to be at, like a, and upgrading it is going to be a real positive and also an important consideration. So operators need to continue investing. I think my other sort of takeaway is really, we're going to need these underlying services. Everyone's sort of spoken about network automation and the benefits it brings, as well as also starting to nurture these new communities and ecosystems to start, you know, building new ways to monetize. Great, thanks. Mike, let's go over to you. Uh, what would you like our audience to take away from the discussion today? So I think public clouds can be used to minimize 5G deployment risk, but just because an application is cloud native doesn't mean it's gonna run efficiently and cost effectively in a public cloud. So make sure you're choosing network functions that have a proven track record in a public cloud. Okay, great. Gordon, how about you? What would you like to share? I just, I'd just like to emphasize the power of the combination of automation, artificial intelligence, and dynamic uh, server frequency control to deliver OPEX savings for CSPs. Great, thank you. And and Deepa, what would you like your final consideration to be today? I would say. It's no longer now a question of whether it's if slicing or when slicing. I think it's more going to be how slicing. How do you going to make it happen? And that would entirely depend on interdriven autonomous operations so that you can create an operated speed and consistency and intelligent driven assurance so that you're no longer about 
waiting for a problem and then fix it, but already have a pre pre preventive solution so that you can prevent these problems from happening in the first place. Okay, that's the big point. Thank you all for joining us today. It was a very wonderful discussion. I know I've learned some things myself. So that was our roundtable. I hope you've learned from our experts about the top reasons to evolve to 5G now and how we can make the investment in Cloud Packet Core pay off. You're invited to explore more about Cloud Packet Core by clicking on the link you see on the screen and also in the chat window. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again next time.